live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Well, Tasmanian parliamentarians have paid their respects to Queen Elizabeth II. In a short sitting today, a motion of condolence was passed before the session adjourned. A moment of reflection for a leader who touched our hearts from a world away. As an inspired leader who, pers who personified dignity and decency in public life. Tasmanian Parliament passing a motion of condolence for Queen Elizabeth II. Her Majesty visited Tasmania seven times, the first fondly remembered. An official motorcade, military procession and a colourful performance from thousands of local schoolchildren greeted the Royal Cuppy. One of the constants of life in Tasmania, the great divide between North and South, reared its head with complaints in the Examiner newspaper that the royal couple has spent more time in Hobart than Launceston. As well as personal stories shared after her passing. Whether it be about when they saw her on a visit, their tradition of watching the Christmas message, or following her bright and colourful fashions. However, the morning didn't pass without references to a possible republic. That time is not now. For now, we simply should reflect on a good life. Or mixed feelings towards the monarchy. Who was Queen Elizabeth to those who were here first? It's fair to say, if social media is any guide, Mr Speaker, that feelings span the full breadth of human emotion. But all agreed her devotion to duty was unparalleled. An example to us all, Mr Speaker. May she rest in peace. As a mark of respect, Parliament has been adjourned until later this month. Both houses will sit for two extra days in October to make up for this week's lost time. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. Council assisting Elizabeth Bennett has told the Commission of Inquiry she shares the hope of victim survivors that what will follow from hearings is meaningful change and not just another inquiry. The comments were made during her closing address following eight weeks of harrowing accounts from inside the walls of Tasmania's institutional settings. 165 witnesses have shared their insights on the issues, with the final hearing again highlighting the emerging theme of reporting concerns at the Launceston General Hospital. Commissioners, you may find his evidence dem demonstrated a lack of insight into his role and the impact of his comments that is astonishing in a person who has held a senior role in a hospital for 35 years. It's clear from these hearings that there are systemic and cultural issues unique to the state of Tasmania that were not uncovered and addressed by the National Royal Commission recommendations. The importance of achievable reform was also recognised as commissioners prepare their recommendations due to be delivered in May next year. Labor candidate Luke Edmonds has been elected as the new member for Pembroke. The Clarence City Councillor received 63% of the vote after a provisional distribution of preferences. The formal declaration of the polls will take place tomorrow morning at Parliament House. A central Hobart supermarket has been shut down this afternoon due to a structure fire. Fire crews were called to Newtown Woolworths at 1.20 this afternoon, quickly extinguishing the blaze. However, there is substantial smoke damage. Tasmania Police is now investigating the incident. Strawn is celebrating after being named the gold-winning Tiny Town in Australia's Tourism Awards. It's cool temperature forest and pristine waterways making the former port a pin on the map. Sheffield also taking silver in the small town category. The Premier says despite the pandemic, Tasmania's tourism industry has bounced back with record amounts of spending. Australia's top drops have poured into the state for the Royal Hobart Wine Show. The judges critiquing around 1,200 samples from sparkling through to brandy and zero alcohol wine. Tasmania making up more than 220 of the entries. All we see is a, a, a glass with a wine uh, in it and a number in front of us. So we, we judge them completely blind, not knowing anything apart from the variety and the vintage. They have to have an attractive upfront aroma, but they also have to have subtlety, they've got to have length and they've got to have a purity of wine. One of the judges describing Tasmania as a region of the future, pinpointing Chardonnay and Pinot Noir as some of our high-end wines. The biggest hotel on the northwest coast is less than a month away from opening, with locals rushing to be the first to stay. We've taken a look inside the 187-room Novotel in Devonport, which has transformed the city's landscape. 
Devonport's Novotel is more than just a new hotel. It's a first impression for tourists arriving on the Spirit, a link to luxury for northwest travellers and for locals, an experience some want to be a part of from the start. Everyone has just been so supportive, so welcoming and they're all repeating the same thing which is that it's something that Devonport has needed for a little while. With 187 rooms, it's one of the state's largest hotels and while a local landscape overlooks each room, guests overlook a stunning view of their own with the Mersey and Bass Strait a stone's throw away. We're just looking forward to actually being able to open the doors and welcome the community. General Manager Anna Royal says locals sense the history, making up a large number of bookings for opening night on Saturday, October 8. But a predicted boost in corporate functions and local events will keep business ticking over. The number of hotel beds that we've had has caused us some, I guess, some problems around um, hosting events and things, even sports events and those sorts of things in the past. So this will just increase the offering. The idea for a new luxury hotel in Devonport was dreamt up back in 2009 as part of the Living City market. Master plan. Now, 13 years on, that vision has finally come to life. It just widens the, the possibilities across our city um, and we're really keen to, to see where it's going to go. And with finishing touches being made, that future isn't far away. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. The RACT is calling for more funding in the next state budget to give councils a fair shot at improving Tasmania's remote roads. It comes during Rural Road Safety Month, data revealing more than 60% of the state's serious injuries and deaths occur on high-speed roads. Some speeds on our rural roads are inappropriate. Um, the thing about a speed limit is it's telling the driver about the conditions and as we're constantly saying, you need to drive to the conditions. The RACT is urging drivers heading out of town to keep an eye out for livestock, take breaks and ensure their vehicles are roadworthy. Tasmania's petrol prices have plummeted to their lowest since October. Hobart taking the cake with $1.59, while in Launceston prices were a little higher, motorists filling up for $1.67 at Tas Petroleum, the state averaging $1.71 per litre today. But the low Bowser price may be short-lived, jumping by 25.3 cents, with the government's fuel excise cut set to be scrapped at the end of the month. Good evening. Three weeks out from the NBL's official tip-off, the Jack Jumpers will once again test out their on-court chemistry, this time in Darwin. Heading to the warmth for the pre-season blitz, they'll be forced to play without one of their Tasmanian stars. Back in their Kingborough training digs, Scott Roth watches every move, putting his roster to the test. <laughs> We've got a great group, um, high energy teams, practices are physical, you know, I've got corks and bung eyes and everything else about it, so um, hopefully we can take that physicality at everyone else. Sam McDaniel sidelined due to rib soreness, but Jack McVeigh is ready to rumble after shoulder concerns. A shot of energy ahead of the NBL Blitz. He's been chomping at the bit the last couple of weeks and we've held him back, so he, had, he got through a full day today, sorry, yesterday and today, and do the same tomorrow and he'll be ready to go for the Blitz. They'll face the best in the competition first up on Saturday. But a pre-season Muay Thai hit out by the Kings wasn't packing the punch it might have hoped. Everyone's doing Muay Thai boxing this time of year and sometimes like to post about it and some don't, but we've got multiple guys in the gym and yeah, it's a bit of false hustle from my end, but we'll see how it goes. With their fighting fit veteran eager for a little time in the sun. Yeah, I feel great. I'm ready to go. Bring on Darwin. The Ant Army will return to My State Bank Arena on October 3 for the Jackies' first home game under lights where they'll go head to head with the Taipans. Grace Evans, 7 Tasmania News. Clarence High School is number one in the state after the girls' side clinched the annual Tassie Hawks Cup after beating Maris Regional College 59 to 25. Clarence made the most of its first crack at the cup in the new competition, which combined government and independent schools for the first time. The boys' high schools play tomorrow. Canterbury has the chance to win its first Premier League hockey title since the year 2000 when the club comes up against Derwent in Saturday's grand final. Only a handful of their players have made it this far into the season. We've never had this experience as a club. The boys are keen. Throw the kitchen sink at it really and <laughs> have a crack. Derwent's the reigning Premier but nearly bombed out in the prelim after blowing a 3-1 lead and having to win a penalty shootout. While it's not ideal for us to be going to that constantly, um, we've got enough experience in that situation and enough confidence in who's taking the shootouts. 
And there are clearly two top teams in the women's. Derwent and OHA have met in three of the last four grand finals. Both teams, are skill-wise, fitness-wise, are actually evenly matched. We've had about 25 players run through the team throughout the season. And, um, you know, come finals time, it's when you get everybody back together and you get to see the team as a whole and really work together for that final push. The ledge is even at two wins apiece when the sides have met during the year. And former Taz Racing CEO Paul Erickson has taken the top job at Racing Australia. Erickson spent three years at Taz Racing before quitting the role back in July. He replaces Miles Foreman in the role. Good evening. Hobart and Devonport recorded 12 degrees today. Launceston and Friendly Beach is our high with 15 and Burnie 11. Overnight temperatures up to 7 below average, while today they sat between 1 and 4 below normal. Smithton, Bushy Park and King Island 14. Strawn, Groves and Helens, Lowhead and Flinders Island 12. Liaweenie a top of 7. Some cloud extended across the west and south today. Just a light shower over those regions. On the bigger picture, a frontal band of clouds swirls into a low south of WA. A cold air mass behind that. However, However, most of the nation cloud-free. Tomorrow, the high will move to our east. The broad area of low pressure lies over the Southern Ocean, another low over northern WA and into the Territory. Winds north nor easterly at 10 to 20 knots, increasing to 30 knots over the west, swells at 2 metres. Strong wind warning for waters between Low Rocky Point and Stanley, from the northern tip of Flinders Island down to St Helens Point and also from Wineglass Bay to Tasman Island. We also have a frost warning across many districts, temperatures dropping to minus 2 in susceptible areas. Forecast for tomorrow. Hobart, a sunny day and 16 degrees. 16 the top for Jeeveston after a cold night. Minus 2 for Bothwell, but fine tomorrow and 14. Launceston, a high of 15 degrees. Minus 1 overnight, 14 for Devonport. Maybe a late shower, partly cloudy for Cressy. For Burnie tomorrow, a high of 13 degrees with a late shower moving in. A morning frost for Strawn. Minus 1 to 16 the temperature range. 15 the high for Curry with late showers. And for St Helens, partly cloudy 14, 15 for Swansea and Orford. On Thursday, showers extending from the northwest with little reaching the east coast. Showers for most districts on Friday more frequent over the north and northwest. And on Saturday, showers again across the state, winds becoming light in the evening. Showers as well in Perth tomorrow, a possible storm for Adelaide, a late shower moving in over Melbourne, 19 there to start. An early shower and 18 in Sydney, partly cloudy in Brisbane, Darwin a nice 36. Don't know if it's nice, but it's 8 degrees and mostly cloudy in Hobart. 8 right now in Launceston and 7 in Devonport. Looks like we've worked a couple of minutes late again tonight, Kim. I hope I can get home in time for Farmer Wants a Wife. I'm counting how many times they say the word connection. That's what my life's like at the moment. <laughs> stay connected, stay tuned in, Murph. Thank you very much. That is all your news for now. Thanks for your company this evening. Good night. <laughs>